Everybody, welcome to Tai Chi to the people. I am Coach Jan. We got Mark here. We're going to do some Tai Chi. We're going to focus on, I want to ask you a question. We're going to focus on one particular move today called the Anaconda, which has its roots uh, from my coach, Josh Waitskin, and assistant coach, uh, Dan Caulfield, that they pulled from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And we've talked about this in the past, and I've showed some examples, but I want to uh, utilize this moment to articulate one idea, and that's space control. And think of it this way, you see land and you want that land, so you go take that land. <laughs> and I think it's a really, really important uh, concept uh, of taking land uh, and, and in terms of it as an analogy to what we're doing with the Anaconda and how it can relate to Tai Chi if you're looking at Tai Chi from a martial perspective. And um, if you're looking at Tai Chi from a martial perspective, you have to think of you have to at least contemplate the concept of conquering, the con the, 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 and of taking space, taking land, and controlling that land. Now, when you start thinking about the term control, a lot of, of tension may come into your mind. And so it's really important that we talk about this and uh, reframe what we're doing. And I want to show you that no matter what your um, perspective of Tai Chi is, these, these, this skill is going to be really, really helpful for you. And it's going to be helpful for any anybody that, that is, is interested in using the flow to get into a position to uh, dynamically connect their body to the opponent's body so that they move as one and that, that there's one mind. And that mind is your mind <laughs> in the opponent's body. So you are connecting with them down to a point of, of being able to control where they step because you know that touching one point is gonna cause another point to react. And therefore you're already a step ahead or maybe multiple steps ahead to get that person out of the ring or onto the floor where you want them to be. And this all starts with the anaconda or should I say the anaconda doesn't start with the anaconda. It starts with the breath work, it starts with the visualization. And the anaconda is in your form more than likely. And it's bird's tail. <laughs> and Bird's tail obviously has many walking bird's tail, specifically in the uh, Wu style of Tai Chi, uh, has been how I've trained the anaconda uh, when I don't necessarily have a training partner. And uh, it's massively helpful. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for being able to do it alone, it would be much more challenging to do it with a person. That's why one of the, the values of doing any form at all, if your style has form or kata, um, to be able to take these ideas and concepts and to work on them in such a way where you refine your mechanic and you refine the mechanic that you bring to the partners, et cetera. So uh, we're gonna work on it, it's gonna be great. And we're gonna start out with, uh, of course, this is Tai Chi to the People presented by Justice for Hire, the world's first martial arts cinematic universe. You can join the cast of Justice for Hire from justiceforhire.app or you can just check out everything we're doing on there at justiceforhire.com and some really amazing things happening. And that's produced by Real World, the world's first social film studio. It's a, a, a cinematic social network where anybody can come together and create together and make movies and shows and, and other uh, forms of visual stories happening all together um, in one community. So check us out, you can invest in Real World. I have the hat on right now, realworld.com, uh, wefunder.com slash real world, wefunder.com slash real world, R-E-E-L-W-O-L-D. And you can own part of the company, buy stock of the company, and it's great stuff. Justin Fry is free to join. And of course, these Tai Chi to the Peoples are always uh, open to anybody, everybody who wants to, to train with us. So that being said, let's do a couple of, of uh, warm-up exercises and really get into the alignment. Imaginary string lifts you from the top of the head. Once you feel that imaginary string lifting you up, you might find it lifts your chest. You might find it lifts your shoulders. And those are okay as long as you recognize that you want to release those things. <laughs> so as long as you recognize the challenge, it's okay to have the challenge. And then you soften this chest and you soften the shoulders and you let all of the vertebrae, each one progressively going down as you move your attention down, each vertebrae soften, soften, as if each one's melting, falling distance. I did some pull-ups earlier today, so I feel a little bit of the, the tightness, so I have to work a little extra to inhale into my belly and exhale, pushing the breath, visualizing going into the muscles and melting that tension away. The mouth is closed, 
and the tongue is gently placed by the ceiling of the mouth for all the breathing. Slight tension in the anus, palms facing down, feet shoulder width apart and parallel. Weight mostly on the heels. And the tailbone should feel like there is a weight on it, meaning that it's being pulled straight down, not a tuck forward, but a straight down. But when those knees soften, the weight will shift mostly to the heels, tailbone straight down. Weight mostly on the inside of the legs. Pelvis should feel like a bowl of water. You don't want to spill that water in any particular direction. It's a full bowl of water. You want to tilt it. You want to keep it very balanced. All the breathing using the base diaphragm, the lower down tian, three finger lengths below the belly button. You have your first chakra, the second chakra in yoga, that's the one we're focusing on. The lower down tian. Inhale into the belly. See the color gather. And exhale, wash that color down the arms with all the fingertips. Inhale, deep. Exhale, wash the color down. Then we're giving the sensation of breathing a color. Draw the color to the belly. Exhale down. Soften the hands out. Inhale, down. Exhale, wash the color down. Deep, inch your legs, exhaling down. Inhaling out, exhaling down. Again, inhaling up. This time even deeper. Exhale down. Inhaling out. Exhaling down. Breathing formula number three. Inhaling up. Exhale, push the color from the belly out to the palms and fingertips. Inhaling up, stage one. Even deeper, two. Even deeper, three. Exhaling out. And stage four. Inhaling up. Even deeper. Even deeper. Even deeper. Now walk the color out. Beautiful. Widen the stance, hollow fist, resting right on the hips. I'm going to tilt the camera down just so you can see the half four stance. Wide. Oh, hollow fist, tailbone still dropping down. Imaginary string, re engage it, soften the collarbone, soften the shoulder blades. The shoulder blades fall straight down as well. So we have a counterbalance dropping the collarbone, dropping the shoulder blades. Exhaling down. Grab a two up one, exhaling down. Two. I'm going to show you guys an example of this, this exercise right now. So Autumn's about to walk out, inhaling up, exhaling down. She's going to hit the gym, inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhale up, exhale out, inhale deep, exhale. Okay, so bird's tail. Who style bird's tail? You have this right here. You guys, know this exercise. Middle finger on the pulse, one palm up, one palm down, and you have your bird's tail. Every different style will do it differently. Blue style will have its A-frame, and the shoulder blades disappear. Inhale back, and then you get your, going to your single whip, et cetera. That's the blue style of fashion. Um, the walking bird's tail, I find to be the most uh, adaptable to the concept of the anaconda. And that means, let's say I do my, my uh, punch, I come up, Again, I'm doing Wu style. So I have my seven star position or play guitar. And notice that I have the opposite foot from a hand forward, right hand, left foot. So I inhale, boom. I'm sucking in, dropping the hip, elbow dropping, and I'm coming forward. And I'm, I'm widening my stance, exhaling, pushing off the back leg into the front. I'm exhaling into my left middle finger. I'm leading with the breath work and feeling my center in the belly push forward here. So the color shoots through my hand, but I feel this incredibly strong center move forward. And then you step with the back leg forward and you go into that traditional first step. Inhale down, down, down. And as I said before, come to your single whip. So how that works here, and how we're going to uh, work on this concept 
is when the 50 50 clinch. So Josh and Dan, especially Dan Caulfield, and I have videos of this, I promise I'm going to put them up. <laughs> so Dan Caulfield, especially an expert at utilizing this anaconda. Now, the anaconda is going to be much deeper than just the form. Uh, it's the thinking behind that goes into your form. So let's start here. Um, can you switch legs forward, please? Boom. So I have my, I was in this position before, opposite hand and foot forward, my left foot's forward. I have the 50-50 clinch. Normally the, the same hand, same foot is forward, but you'll often get into this position when you're uh, sparring, grappling, et cetera. So I want my partner or my opponent to step back so I can move them out of the ring. So I'm gonna exhale, I'm gonna push into that front leg. So I pushed off my back into the front, I push them to the back, and now I'm going to step, boom, and I'm gonna step, and I'm gonna move them, it's playing it. I'm gonna step, and I'm gonna move them, and however they react, you don't necessarily know exactly how they're going to react, or I don't know exactly how she's going to react, per se, um, but you're always adjusted. So I see that foot step back, and now I come in again, and I take more space. The concept of this anaconda is move with the belly, but also be consistently compressing and eating space. That concept of, I see land, I'm going to take that land. So every little bit, you can create this, you, there's much of this happening here, you can create your shape with your fingers to your arms and hands and define how, much, how far you're going to extend your arms. What I mean by that is that if you're doing too much of this, that you haven't defined your structure clearly for yourself. So, and if you just lock and hold, then you also still haven't defined your structure. You're just holding and you're creating a bunch of tension. And so what you want to do is to be able to, and you can practice it in this, in this posture, in your walking bird's tail, is to create the shape that you want. Know how far you want your hands to be based on how, uh, based on the opponent's body that you're, you're holding right now. Now you'll notice that there's some looseness in my elbow. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want to pin her wrist and then still activate my fingers and define the shape. So my mind goes all the way to the fingers. And sometimes you might even do a little squeeze. And this little squeeze happens in the, in the double palm press. That's also in a bunch of yang forms, the double palm. So I'll make it. Come real quick. Oh, we're almost done with it, so you can go to the gym. So that double palm press is going to be a little squeeze to make them uncomfortable, and then a roll, meaning that my my lead hand is going to roll them just slightly, and my front hand that's doing the press is going to agree with that roll going the opposite way. So I'm pulling, pushing with this hand but I'm still maintaining the squeeze. They're, they're, all these intentions are subtle, but they're happening at the same time. And so now we do the same breath work. Can you step your other leg forward, please? So now I have her here. I'm doing this little squeeze. I know I'm pushing her out. And notice that she's spinning slightly more in the direction that I want her to spin. Now, the only other thing that you add here, and there's you know, many layers of strategy, um, but the only other overt thing that you're going to add is where your feet are stepping. So we're gonna go on her back here. Notice that I'm cutting across the line. And then I'm gonna start defining where I wanna go. And I'm doing these, thank you so much. So I'm doing these, these um, very, very subtle compressions. Very subtle compressions here. And it's all within this shape. And this bird's tail shape is so, is adaptable, bridges to the double palm press. And this double palm press, which again has many, many different applications. Um, one application is a grappling application. And that's why when you see me do it in the uh, Luhabatha hybrid yang form, uh, if you watch uh, that water boxing uh, six minute form, you'll notice that I'm emphasizing a intentional pull. So I'm doing this here with the intention of these fingers pulling while this hand is pushing and not just through the hand, but from the belly and shoulder blade. So I'm compressing, pulling and pushing at the same time. Two different intentions at the same time. You also see the same concept of two different intentions at the same time in 
separating heaven and earth, the Qigong exercise from the eight pieces of brocade. And just to, to as an example, so that you can get uh, into this concept, get more behind this concept. Of course, we have our feet shoulder width apart, fingers pressing into the, just below the buttocks, above behind the thighs, as if you're pressing a button going right into the muscle fiber. And so now my right hand comes up, inhaling. The breath is lifting the wrists. So I have a clear visualization, so important, of as I inhale, as my belly inflates, a string lifting my wrists. As my hand passes the collarbone, I inhale even more deeply. Notice what happens, fingers activate. So I'm very relaxed, boom, the fingers, index, middle finger, thumb, energizing. Now look what happened here. Tricep starts to inflate. So I still have the wrist being lifted, but now I have the tricep assisting and I'm turning my head. The wrist is still lifting. And now I'm still, this is all one breath happening. I'm looking in the same direction my fingers are pointing and my hand is going to be lifted, pulled upward while my other hand now is going to push down. And here you have the two opposites, the concept of being lifted and being pulled while the other hand pushes. I am not pushing this hand up and pushing this hand down. Those are, that would be doing the same thing on opposite sides. That is more simplistic thinking. So it's so important to understand the difference between the dynamic thinking and the simplistic thinking, because it's the dynamic expansive thinking that's going to help elevate your form in a way that it is very tough to repeat and very, very challenging for the naked eye to discern between, um, you know, make it seem like you have powers. And it's not that you have powers, it's that it's just you're training your mind to, to think very dynamically and, and in an expansive way about the different movements that are happening simultaneously. So here we go again, inhaling up, even deeper. And now I'm being pulled up, the other hand's pushing. This is the simple way to train this, this, this very, very wonderful mechanic, exhaling down. Inhaling up, I'll talk about the exhalation in a second. Breath is lifting the wrist. Notice that my elbow is super relaxed. So in other words, it's not lifted up. Inhale even deeper. Now this is the inhalation even deeper, activates the tricep. I'm being pulled up. So I have a clear intention of being pulled. Notice the difference. I'm not pushing myself. I'm being lifted by the wrist. And now the other hand is going to push down. And I'm not pushing to through my shoulders either. So I'm not pushing down through my shoulder. I'm not lifting up through the shoulder to the extent that it breaks my, my posture. Lifting up, pushing down, but I still maintain the center line with my spine. So that center line is still very strong. It's not bent. And exhale down. As you exhale down, you release the tricep and the hand floats by that straight. Notice that when you release the tricep, the elbow floats straight down. That elbow floating straight down is going to give you extra downward weight and a very focused downward weight. A video that will come out did I put it out yesterday? No, it'll come out on Thursday. Well, you, you'll see it by the time this is up, you probably see it. Um, I'll talk, uh, I talk about uh, the dropping of, you're in the 50-50 clinch and you might be trying to, to pummel in or swim in, pummeling in to get to your the double inside position and you wanna drop that elbow with the, the knee to get that really, really great uh, cutting through your opponent's uh, uh, guard, uh, the lock that they have on their body. And all the, this little moment is super helpful at training that as well. So let's do it one more time inside. And then we'll go right back. Being pulled up and pushing down, exhaling. And now being pulled up. Pushing down, exhale, hand floats down, elbow drops straight down, and the hand is floating right down the center line. It may look a little bit off because of my uh, light over here, which is creating shadows and make, make it seem a little off balance. But anyway, so let's get back to this bird's tail concept. So bird's tail, yang style bird's tail, 
you'll likely have your back foot out 45 degrees and this hand out uh, still right in front of the chest. Uh, more specifically, your middle finger will be as high as your nose. Uh, that's, that's fairly common yang style um, first style position. You may have slightly inflated elbows for your yang style. Uh, Sing Yi does this as well, slightly inflated elbows. Wu style will not do that. Elbows will be very, very, very downward, and shoulder blades will be forward. And that's how it'll compensate for the inflation. Inflation is to, is to help the shoulder uh, blades lift up and to create a little more um, space between, um, with, between the barriers. So you might get a hit, hit, and then the impact is going right into the ribs, and that sucks because your, your bone is on your bone. Uh, and so Wu style just has a different way of getting that space, shoulder blades forward. I like to do the Wu style way because that is how I'm, I'm most intimately trained for this exercise. So holding this posture, but we're gonna switch now. We're gonna switch the leg and we're gonna, uh, so we can actually go into this opposite lead hand and foot. Remember that lead middle finger is as high as your nose. And then inhale, you're gonna suck in. So, sometimes people might exhale, I recommend inhaling here. Inhale, drawing in, sucking in. Meaning sucking in the energy. Some people go loop, drop in, but I do my best not to use too many of the um, uh, I, I want to use as much of the English, English language as possible to paint the picture uh, so we can be make sure that we're talking about the same thing together as a community. So sucking in, meaning my tailbone is dropping straight down. My elbow is dropping with the tailbone. And it's turning. Boom, tailbone. My knee is also bending slightly. So it is not a suck and bend over, meaning my hips go back. My hips are dropping down. Boom. And I'm turning in. So that little sucking posture. And now I'm going to step forward. Opposite leg forward. I'm going to step outward first and then push off the back leg into the front. So imagine this position, what you have here, as the opponent's body. Everything inside this space is the opponent's body. Even this back hand, this back hand could be on an elbow. It could also just be reaching. Sometimes you're in a 50-50 clinch and you need to reach behind your opponent to get them to walk out of the ring. Meaning that you have to actually reach to get more strength because if you don't reach, the mind follows the fingers. So um, reaching will help you with that forward momentum uh, versus holding on might get you to, to keep the momentum or keep the forward power, uh, not optimize your forward mobility and keep it locked into the opponent. It's very, very challenging uh, if you're not uh, pointing at times. So, opposite hand for forward. Step out, exhale, one. So stage one, let's talk about the breath work here, goes into the hand, step out, stage two goes into the other hand. Reversing, bring it back. So inhale, suck in. Exhale, push off the back leg, widen that stance. I push into my left hand or my, my uh, lower hand. Exhaling, pushing into the lower hand. My breath visualizes all the way through the middle finger of the lower hand, which is connected to the pulse of the right arm or the lead arm. I step the back leg forward. I step the back leg forward, exhale. And now look what happens here. This is incrementally claiming space. So I'm, I've switched sides uh, just for the camera. So I've just turned. I'm stepping out. Now look what happens on my back. Exhale, two-stage exhalation. Notice the shoulders not lifting up, but pushing forward, meaning the shoulder blades are disappearing. Notice how that movement is coordinated with me shifting the weight forward, the hips going forward, and the color visualization right here. I feel, and I see in my best times doing this, I feel like a color orb right in the belly. That's how clear and clean my focus is. And I'm pushing that through my arms 
forward through the opponent's body. And so when that opponent is feeling me come forward, they're feeling like this ball of like of, of, of weight and power. That's what I want them to feel. I want them to feel like I am rolling through them. And wherever they step, I'm following them. I'm following. And the footwork, just so you guys can see, I'm going to put my hands behind the back for a second. The footwork can be whatever it needs to be. So you can step, 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 and, and you can sidestep, cut off angles, cut off where they're stepping. You're, you can always look. Where you can step in between the opponent's legs, stepping slightly through to cut their base, meaning the lower portion of their body. You want to cut through while you're holding this posture. And then you want to step and make them choose the other angle. So if I step to the left, they're probably going to spin to the right. If they're spinning to the right, I might step right through them to push them back farther because they're giving me that, that spinning momentum that still has the backward energy. So I want to ride that backward energy. So if I'm the opponent, what I mean by that is that if I'm stepping and I get pushed and I swing this way, you want to push the opponent more back this way to edge them out of a ring. Of course, you might also be setting up a uh, throw, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> but let's talk about this incremental increase for a moment. So the incremental increase here, just like here, dropping down. And to a certain extent, I know I'm preaching to the choir. If you're a Tai Chi person, you understand this. Taking it slow, widening, taking the space. And at each one of these moments, for example, we talk about two-step, uh, two-stage inhalation and exhalation. Exhale stage one. That's stage one, you're claiming with the shoulder blades. And now stage two, inhale up. I'm keeping my space here. I don't give anything up at all. I haven't given anything up at all. My intention is to stay still as possible right here. And then step out wider and exhale two. So you want to minimize, of course, everything is always moving at once, you know, <laughs> like every atom vibrates this moment. But what I'm getting at is that sometimes people might step and they might move like this. If you do that, you're giving up so much real estate, you're giving up so much land. And any experienced push hands player is going to, not any, like, you know, very sophisticated uh, 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 push hands players, if they find that you're giving up a little bit of that space, or even grapplers, uh, they're going to take advantage of it. So you want to make sure that you're not swinging yourself back and to and fro as you're advancing. So we're going to be very, very still. Move yourself down, step out wide, exhale, pushing from the back leg into the front, pushing from the belly, visualization into the left hand, which is this one, and then step, exhale even deeper. Now, to be fair, to, to be transparent, uh, while I was talking, I took an inhalation and, and then did another exhalation. So I'll do it again without talking so you can see the two exhalations uh, back to back. Right hand, left foot, seated on my back leg, my right leg. Left hand to my right palm. Inhale one. Exhale. Exhale even deeper. Do it again from the front. Oh, I'll do it again in 45 degrees. Right hand, left foot forward. Left hand, right pulse. Middle finger, right pulse. Inhale, two, step out. Exhale, one. Step, exhale, two. I'll do it again from the front. And I want to emphasize the footwork this time and how circular the footwork is. So, taking my right hand and my left foot, actually, do a style again, right hand, left foot, I'm sucking down. Now watch this, step out, exhale, pushing off the back leg into the front, and now exhale, step two. Now look at this. Some people call this a stealing step. There are many different versions of stealing steps. But notice that I'm drawing a circle I'm drawing a circle right here. 
So this circular step cuts and drags the opponent get a little lower. So you see, you drag the opponent along that circle. You step one, drag two along the circle. Super important. It's super important because when you're uh, playing with an opponent, <clears throat> you want to feel like you don't end. And I think that's one of the most important concepts for Tai Chi, that if we are truly connected to our opponent, then we should feel like there's, uh, that we are moving as one, that where one end the other begins and therefore there is no end. And to an untrained opponent that may not have that same type of sensitivity and awareness, it should feel like whatever we're doing just keeps on going and going and going. And in that sense, that a lot of times is the flow that people are seeking to see in Tai Chi, which uh, they oftentimes mistake for these big overt movements. And that same experience can be happening to an opponent even through what seems like broken rhythm. It, it can totally be happening in, in broken rhythm. And that's because the circles are so subtle uh, and the connection is so subtle that uh, oftentimes people just, just may not say, well, that's not Tai Chi because it's not, <laughs> you know? And, and this is awesome. Don't get me wrong, this is amazing. It, it, like when you do these exercises, I can feel it right now. I feel the circulation surging through my hands. I can feel it because I know that the mechanics and how to position my body to, to achieve that experience. But that does not necessarily mean that it applies to the martial world uh, oh, directly. You have to really adapt these things, make them smaller. Like even that this moment here is still very similar to um, many other moves that we'll do from a martial standpoint that really, really do work. So, uh, Mark, any, any ideas uh, that, that, that you'd like, uh, uh, you know, maybe we can expand upon uh, that, that have not been covered in, in, and do you feel, do you feel like this is a, a uh, clear explanation of this or are there any questions, thoughts, ideas? Yeah, no, this is a clear, very clear explanation. Uh, just any of the basics for me is very helpful just because uh, the concept of, uh, you know, closing and taking space is, I haven't applied it much. So it's very interesting to, for me to hear it. So any of the basics uh, is helpful for me. Okay. Um, this is, a, do, do you find this, uh, this move, is this in your form? It is, yeah. Uh, grass, okay. sparrow, grass sparrow's tail. Could, could I see your grass sparrow's tail? Well, yeah, it's more this way. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then you have the double press. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is the, thank you for sharing that, it's beautiful. Um, so I'll, I'll say this, that again, the Wu style has the middle finger here. Uh, Sing Yi, in my experience, also has the middle finger here. Uh, Mark, I just saw you do a version which I've seen before, which does not have the middle finger there. Uh, and it's, it's, it's all these variations, you know, there's, in, there's infinite applications of this stuff. So I, I just want to be so super clear that my intention is not to say that this is only one thing. Um, uh, but I, I, I do want to uh, highlight that the way you did it, the way I did it, both work for the same outcome. Um, of this particular uh, uh, live sparring uh, experience. And so, and Josh and Dan were not Wu style Tai Chi practitioners by any means. They're like they're both, you know, uh, uh, reverse breathing Yang style and uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Aikido, et cetera. Well, the, Josh is not Aikido, Dan is Aikido. Um, so, what I'm getting at is that whether you do it like this, boom. Or you do it like this with the double, or you do it on uh, uh, the let's see, reverse for the arm. Yeah. Let's see. So the reverse for the arm like this. Sometimes it'll, it'll touch, sometimes it won't. Inflating the tricep. 
however you do it and inflame the tricep is, is, is also another, the, these are all just points of connection, you know, uh, or let me remove the word just. These can all be points of connection to your opponent. So, uh, and, and however you want to make sure that you have multiple points of contact so that your body feels like it's never ending. So that when you step with these circle low motions and you move the opponent around and potentially uh, throw them off balance because they only have enough experience in movement to take two steps, not four. Uh, so so that, that when they're getting moved around, they're like, oh my like, ah, and they fall over their own hips, trip over their own feet, et cetera. Uh, all that can come from any particular style, as long as you, you're aware that um, there's strategy in the flow. And I, 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 I want to quote Jay-Z because I just on Sunday listened to Jay-Z's uh, title B-Sides concert, which is amazing. It, it, it's, it's one of the best concerts I've ever seen from, a, from especially from a, a hip hop artist. Um, but he says something that is so important for Tai Chi. He says, don't go with the flow, be the flow. And I think it's so, so important because uh, oftentimes when, when, uh, when we're talking about playing push hands, et cetera, you have two people and you're like, oh yeah, no, just, just, just go with it, just soften up and soften up. You of course want to be able to soften up and move, but that soften up and movement, movement uh, uh, game, because it's still a game and an experience is is valuable within a certain set of parameters. And then there's a, there are other games that are important to have awareness of so that you can bring it all together and actually be the flow. <laughs> and be water, as Bruce Lee says, and water can crash, et cetera. And so I think it's so important to understand how strategy bakes into that uh, concoction. And so when you're doing these forms, whether you're doing this way, or this way, or the way that I've been showing on here, that you're really thinking about the, the and I'm doing this to transfer um, as much experience, uh, of my uh, sparring experience, competitive experience to this moment as possible, because uh, you, don't, you shouldn't have to go through all that to, to get this moment. And inhaling, dropping, bringing the opponent down, however, however you do that in your form, and then exhaling, pushing to make sure that they step one. Here's a note that, that I, I did not share before. Once you push from that back leg into the front, you will feel that opponent take a step two. So you're listening for the rhythm that that opponent is creating. So you're, or uh, you're, that you're creating by making the opponent step. So you feel their step and then you step two, exhale even deeper. And you move them one, two, three, four. Maybe you keep on going. And then you set up another move from there. Maybe you step with them. Maybe you, you grasp and you pull and you, 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 you catch them with a hip toss, et cetera. Um, there's so many variations here, but the thinking, the visualizing in some of these moments of not just the energy in the body, but also the rhythm of an imaginary opponent and to step and move really bring that opponent around and to really feel the connection to that imaginary opponent is going to help you that much more uh, whatever style that you do to be able to connect these ideas to strategy because there is a person on the other side that's going to be reacting to the your the inputs that, that we create <laughs> in, in, in any of these moves and so um, I'm, I'm hoping that that brings a, another level of of uh, Another, another level to explore when it comes to this stuff. So, so let, let's, let's finish up with uh, a few, uh, let's do a little blitz because I haven't done any blitzing today. And, um, and we'll, we'll do a little Tai Chi blitz. Mark, do you have a, happen to have a medicine ball? I don't. Okay, so we won't use a medicine. Do you have any, any weight around uh, you? I do, but not, in, not with me right now. Do you have a chair? <laughs> I have a chair. You have a chair? Is, can you lift the chair up? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so let, let's go for this. I'm gonna grab my chair here. Got this chair. And let's, 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 let's work this blitz here. All right. All right, great. So we're gonna treat, we're gonna treat a chair uh, as if it was 
a, a um, medicine ball. And here we go. So uh, we're going to treat this chair. We're going to come up. And first thing we're going to do, what we're really doing here, it's less about the weight and more about the mechanic. So, and this is one of the exercises that we would do on the, the uh, Josh and Dan taught me this exercise on the US Tai Chi Push Nasty. So this exercise, you're gonna drop back. I'm gonna do it without the chair just for a second. You're gonna drop back and you're gonna create this little half squat. Now you could go down farther and farther and farther to create a bigger squat if you'd like, but that's not really what we're, what we're focusing on here. We're talk, talking about the biomechanics. The tailbone is gonna go back. You're gonna create a little suspension bridge function Suspension bridge function in the lower back as the fingers go forward. The fingers you're going to emphasize index, middle finger, thumb. And when you add an object to that, squatting down, holding it up, notice my hips came in and I'm going out. So I'm dropping down. And from here, I'm going to inhale up. And notice that I turn all the way to my right, exhale down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Now look at my back foot. Any direction I'm going in, I'm pivoting the back foot. Exhaling down, inhaling up, exhaling down. Now we can even stop right in the center and inhale straight up and exhale right back down. Inhaling up, exhaling right. Two more, one more. Now, what we're doing here connects right back. Let's couple things happen twice. Nail it up. This connects right back to the anaconda movement, meaning that concept of bird's tail. We're still, whether we're doing this and whether our feet are shoulder width apart or ones forward, we're still spinning the opponent up and out of their root. So bird's tail again has many applications. Um, some of which are just on I mean, I might be going so many applications. Um, so we're working on a similar concept. Um, and now we're adding some weight to it. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Get a little squat in, inhaling up, inhaling deeper, exhale down. And don't worry too much about the coil. You don't have to go coil on the other side. Just come up and come right back down to center. Inhaling up, turn to the side, and then back down to center from the side again. Inhaling up. My weight shifts the ball of my feet, but not so much to lift my heel off the ground, just to, to make sure that there's an emphasis on my ball, my foot, my big toe. Exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. So you really want to make sure you're using the full mechanic. And go one more. Go just as far as you can. Meaning, be pay very close attention to all the heavens. Pay very close attention to your hip, your knee, your whole body. Um, you know, you may or may not be used to doing this type of swing. Uh, you know, it, it might feel like a, like a golf swing a little bit. So just be very, very mindful uh, so that you can slowly get yourself into the position of flexibility where you really feel the twist only as much as you truly want to, and then bring yourself back. You want to incrementally be able to increase your range of motion here with this exercise. So we'll do one more set again on each side, and then we'll do a couple more uh, chair exercises. So now I'm, I've switched sides. I'm gonna drop down. Notice that my hands are out here. Normally I would start right here, and then drop down and lift it out. Inhale up one, exhale down. So two. Three, four, and really inhale through the fingertips. By feel the chair as part of the body. 
Seven, three more. Eight. Two of both the heavens. And it's amazing how that's just fairly light, <laughs> but how even that light weight, when put through that full extension, when put through a very particular binding mechanic, can work the body in ways that make it feel much heavier. And that's the kind of subtle use of weight that we want to be able to distribute to our partners and opponents to be able to, to give them the unique sensations that can put us at an advantage from a martial standpoint. Because when someone feels something that's unique and uncommon, they will often react uh, with some form of nervous scramble. And those are the, the moments you really want to take advantage of. Drop it down, pick it up. Notice my hips come in, holding it, and then I'm going to inhale through my fingertips as I drop down. Inhaling through my fingertips, connecting myself to the chair, feeling the chair, inhaling up. So I'm deepening my awareness of the chair. Exhale. From the back foot, back foot is pivoting. Seven, eight, nine, exhale down, one more, ten, right back down. Even with light weight, you want to make sure that you use the proper body of the cat. So, what the heavens? Good. So now, let's take this, we'll do two more exercises in the chair. Oh, let's do, let's go turn the chair around. And let's do a nice uh, round kick over the chair. And this round kick we'll do slowly, meaning that we'll pick it up, come over, and come down. This is, a, this is really a leg kick. Um, and the intention is to come up over and chop down, almost like you're coming up and going down. This is a Muay Thai round kick. How it looks without the chair is right here. I'll slow it down even more. I'm picking up my knee, and it's as if I'm running. So this back foot, I'm picking up my knee and I'm coming up onto the ball of my foot. Boom, like that. Come up with the ball of my foot, turn, and drop my leg downward. I'm turning my shin down, and cutting right across. It's coming up as if you're drawing an X upward and then chopping down as if you're drawing the other line down. Up and down. So let's work on it here. And any kick that you want to do over this, you can do a higher one too. Uh, you can just do a crescent kick. But you know, let's I'm gonna work on the, the round kick. And And ready, and go. We'll do 10. One, and two, three, five, six. Try to really get your, uh, keep your guard in the most practical position for you as possible. Seven. Eight. Nine. One more. Ten. And we'll switch sides. And again, do any kick that you'd like over the chair, just to make sure that you're getting this faster, bring in a little sweat here. And I'm going to go for the round kick over the chair. You can do 
you can do an axe kick or outside crescent, inside crescent, uh, even forward and coming back. 10 kicks over the chair, and we'll go for it. Under your foot. And one. Five. Five more. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right. And finally, I recommend <laughs> doing some dips. And these dips, we're, I'm going to take my hand and put them right on the chair. My hands, you can have two chairs, depending on your wrists. It really depends on how your wrists feel. Some people may do two chairs and dip downward. I'm going to use just this one and you know, hold the sides of the chair as you can see like this. And I'm gonna do the dip. You can do it multiple ways. You can do them with just your feet out and down and up, which is totally fine and great. You can sit down and relax yourself, or you can do it with your feet straight out and drop all the way down and come up. So what we'll do is we'll do five dips and we'll do five time under tension dips. If you remember last week, we did time under tension exercises. We did push-ups time under tension. And uh, it's very similar to slowing yourself down, speeding up your perception when you do a Tai Chi, except with the weighted exercise, body weighted exercise. So, which is still kind of like Tai Chi anyway. <laughs> so let's go for it. We'll do five seconds up, five seconds going down, five seconds hold down, and five seconds coming back up. And that'll be one. And we'll go for five. And if you want to do this way, remember, or this way, I was fine. Okay, and let's start. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five. Not one, two, three, four, five. That's one, two, three. over fingers head exhale inhale over fingers head climb back and over down and up exhale inhale up exhale and reach the hands behind the back gentle touch do your best to drop the elbow and lift the elbow with this gentle touch you can grip if you'd like, but make sure that you don't make it too much about the pull and make it more about the lift and the, the drop. Lifting the elbow, dropping the elbow. Exhale, 
And if you can't reach, just aim for it. Aim for the to touch. I couldn't do it at first either. It took me a while to get to it. And then, then remember, if you're going to hold, it's about the lift and the drop more than the pull. If you can do both, that's correct. Inhale, deep, exhale. Stretch the shoulder, arm behind the elbow. Inhale, deep, exhale, and switch. And exercise, inhale, deep. Notice that when I'm doing this, my arm is parallel to the ground. And then my heart, if it wasn't covered by my arms, is directly at the camera. My feet are shoulder width apart still. So the intention behind my posture right now is to maintain the, my geometrical center, center. So I want the geometry of the room and my, my relation to it with my heart and my hands to be very, very intentional, hand parallel to the ground. This helps me, especially in sparring, especially in my forms, to really clearly define my lines uh, and all the shapes. So it's really, really important. I recommend it for any time you're shaping any room you walk into to really map the room and the relation of your center line to the room. So that you can clearly define what your 45, your 90, straight ahead, directly behind, and switch sides. Remember, one hand on the kidney, other one walk down from the shoulder to the elbow. As you walk down, you're gently pulling the elbow down, meaning you're dropping your weight downward. And then you're going to scoop that weight up like a doorknob and bring it forward. Inhale, deep, exhale. Notice that my heart is still forward to the camera, feet shoulder width apart. Imaginary string lifting at the top of the head. Inhale, deep, exhale. Notice what I'm doing. Inhale in deep, exhale. Exhale. Dropping the hand down slowly. Feet two fists apart. Inhale. Fingers reach the back, chest up. Hips forward, bow toes. Exhale, the back fingers. Soften the knees. Inhale down. Fingers back, chest up. Hips forward, bow toes. Exhale, push the color of the palms, fingertips, up back. Up the toes. Inhale down. One foot goes forward, exhale, touch the toe. Inhaling deep, switch legs, exhaling, touch the toe forward. Inhaling up, switch legs 45 degrees, exhale down, touch the toe. Inhaling up, switch legs 45. Hold on, touch the toe. Inhaling up, switch legs 90. Inhale down, touch the toe. Inhaling up, exhale, switch. Inhale down. White lines of belly. Exhale, wash any gunk down to the ground. Inhaling up, turn to the right. Up now. Inhale up, turn to the left. One more, inhaling up. Exhale, wash down. Up the side, down the left side. Up the side, down the left side. Shoulder down the back. And inhaling up, just the fingers. Look down. Hands together. Side around the pectoral major, exhaling, pushing the color to the chest, tap around. Massage. Floating rib up. Which side? Stirring four fingers. Side. Collarbone. Switch. Hormones. Switch. 
heart switch around the ears, just the earlobe, and then up, over, down, under. Very strong. And open the face to the side, up the face to the side, and then fingers to the scalp, front to back, back to front, front to back, back to front, massage scalp, front to back, back to front, slapping, back, back to front, fist, gentle banging, front to back, back to front, grab the scalp, knead it like that. Next patch, oh, next patch, next patch, and reverse it. Four fingers on top of the forehead, one, two, and reverse it, one, two. Temples, and reverse it. Under the eyes, and reverse it. And top and bottom, switch, sides, above the teeth, above the gums, beneath the teeth, one, two. Right on those gums and, and reverse it. And flip the fingers out, thumbs, press it home, drill one, two, three, tap. Top and bottom, sides, top and bottom, massage on the sides of the fingers, massage on the top and bottom, and the sides. Massage on the top and bottom and the sides. Make sure the pressure points, the fingers naturally slide, the squeezing fingers naturally slide into the, the grooves of the receiving finger. You can find the pressure points there. Press and hold and drill. Tap around. Top and bottom. And sides. Squeeze top and bottom. Side. Top and bottom again there. Squeezing fingers, sides, fall into these natural grooves. Every time you squeeze, you'll find yourself sliding into a natural groove. And that's where you want to focus, focus the intention, the nice massage, the positive feeling, that area. One, two, three, four, five, grab one, two, three. And close the eyes and hand right line to the belly. Spread the whole body with the sound oh, into the bone marrow. Oh. Inhale up the front from the toes to the head like a tidal wave. Exhale a little down the back like a waterfall. All the white line into the bone marrow. Oh. Inhale up the left side. Exhale a little down the right. Oh. Inhale, right into the belly. Push it down, the legs into the ground, and come back up and around like a fountain in reverse. Um, inhale, breathe. Exhale, push it to the top of the head, and let's surround the body, make a big bubble around you. Um, have gratitude for the body, space that you're in, the people in your life. Thank you so much, as usual. For training, any thoughts, questions, or ideas, uh, always feel free to put them in the comments. And this is Justice for Hire's Tai Chi to the People. You can join Tai Chi to the People uh, every week. Uh, you know, if you ever want to come on these live sessions, uh, they're pre-recorded when you get to them on YouTube. But uh, just message me, and I will send you a link. And you can support what I do on Tai Chi on Patreon and get a bunch of perks and all this other cool stuff at patreon.com slash Jans Tai Chi, J-A-N-S-T-A-I-C-H-I. You can join Justice for Hire from justiceforhire.app or go to justiceforhire.com to see all the cool stuff that we're doing, building a martial arts cinematic universe where anybody can join the cast and become their own hero or villain and team up with others in the community and make awesome movies, shows, content and stuff. It's, it's really cool, really great community. Uh, we also have a big uh, uh, Warner Media Urban, Urban Action Showcase event coming up in the fall that you should definitely uh, uh, become a part of. So you'll see all of that on our site and Real World, company producing it all, realworld.com, R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. Invest in the company. You can own stock in this company. 
uh, on wefunder.com slash real world. So love you guys. Check us out and uh, I'll see you soon.